All right, so now we're going to talk about convergence of line search methods on manifolds. And as you might expect, uh, the proof is uh, very closely motivated um, by um, the vector space case um, with some uh, important caveats um, that, so, so the proof is similar to the sort of the vector space case. Um, but um, the line search doesn't have to be done along a straight line, right? And the other thing is that um, you don't necessarily have to um, choose the Amicho point, right? So long as um, the rate of descent is somehow comparable, if you will, or better, okay? Okay, so let's state the theorem. So the theorem is that, uh, let's say we have a sequence, be an infinite sequence of iterates. Uh, generated by the algorithm, which we had presented. Okay, then the claim is that uh, then any accumulation point um, of xk is a critical point of the cost function. So what that means, okay, is that if you have this infinite sequence, it's like of iterates, and you choose some subsequence, it's like, and you look at the limit of that subsequence, if that limit happens to exist, uh, then, um, a critical point of that, sorry, um, then that limit, it's like, is a um, critical point of the cost function, which basically means that the gradient of the cost function vanishes there. Okay, so uh, the way you prove this is by contradiction, right? So you basically uh, sort of assume it's like that you have a critical point, it's like of this sequence, um, which uh, is, Sorry, you have an accumulation point in the sequence, which is not a critical point of the cost function. Okay, so let's suppose that there is a subsequence <coughs> xk, and k is in some sort of set big K, okay, converging. some uh, x star, okay, with the property that the gradient, it's like of f at x star is not zero, okay. Okay, so, so since uh, by construction, right, of this um, sort of line search algorithm, the Function values, it's like on these iterates are non uh, increasing. So since f of xk is non increasing, right, um, it follows that not just a subsequence, but really the whole sequence. Um, 
converges, it's like to f of x star. I should be clear, right? So I'm saying that I'm looking at the function values that's like on the iterates, and you know that that function value is bounded from above, basically, right? Because it's not increasing, okay? So, um, so that then allows you to conclude that the whole sequence that's like of function values, right, converges to the limiting function value. Okay, okay, so, um, so this implies that, uh, the difference between uh, sort of the function values uh, between sort of adjacent iterates, it's like goes to zero, right? Okay, so it's not possible for this to converge. It's like if it wasn't the case that the differences it's like between these things go to zero. And then by construction, of the algorithm, right? We know that. So now we have this difference, right? This difference. Of course, you know that uh, we. I mean, the algorithm it's like has an expression for the um, the difference in the iterates. It's like there was a condition, if you recall. It's like which the. Um, which the point you choose has to satisfy. It's like, and if you recall, it had to do with comparing essentially the descent. It's like with the descent you would expect from uh, the Armijo point. Okay. So you have f of x k minus f of x k plus one, right? Is greater than equal to minus c sigma a k, the inner product between the gradient of f at x k. Uh, with the search direction, okay, at the point x k. Okay, so um, Then the point, of course, is that this thing here, right? This uh, search direction is a gradient-related sequence, uh, so we have another inequality. So let's see what we have. Okay, so. This sequence of search directions is gradient related. So you must have that. Um, the alpha case, right? Go to zero. Sorry, that's an alpha key. Okay. And then the alpha keys are determined uh, by the Armijo rule. some critical value, let's call it k bar, right? Alpha k is equal to beta to the n k uh, alpha bar, right? Where m k is an integer greater than zero. OK. 
Okay. All right, which basically means that um, again, it's like it has to be that um, this alpha k is going to be um, at most it's like beta times alpha bar, right? Um, so this implies that alpha k is um, greater than equal to beta times alpha bar, right? For k greater than equal to k bar, right? Which contradicts the sort of uh, sort of observation that um, the alpha k's have to limit to zero. Okay. So, um, so it means that the update does not satisfy the Amitro condition. So, um, so that means that uh, f of xk minus f of rk alpha k over beta, it's like eta k, right? That's less than one minus sigma alpha k over beta. It's like the inner product between the gradient of f of xk with the search direction evaluated at the point xk. All right, and then this is for all k in this uh, set k, uh, which is sort of where we had chosen the subsequence, right? And k greater than or equal to this critical value k bar, okay? So uh, we can um, denote some things. So let's denote uh, a new search direction um, as just a normalization of the original search direction. And then uh, we have an alpha tilde k, which is alpha k times the norm, it's like of the search direction divided by beta. Then uh, this inequality says the following. Sort of reads at uh, f hat at xk is zero minus f hat of xk alpha k tilde, it's like eta k tilde divided by alpha tilde k, right, that's less than minus sigma, the gradient of f xk and eta tilde k and the point xk, right? Where f hat is the um, essentially this local representative, if you will, like of the function, right? Um, Where's the local representative, which is induced by the retraction, if you will, okay? So maybe let's just say it this way, f hat is equal to um, f composed with the retraction. Okay, all right, that's just a reminder of what f hat is. Okay, then the mean value theorem says that g 
sure is that there exists some time in the interval from zero to alpha total k such that um, so I'm going to replace this uh, essentially this difference quotient right by uh, the linearization I mean the derivative basically of is going to be less than <coughs> right okay so there's some point that's like between zero it's like uh, and uh, alpha tilde k right there's some time between those two things it's like where uh, this difference quotient uh, is equal to the value it's like of the derivative evaluated at that point or at that time okay okay so minus sigma gradient f xk eta k tilde xk right with the I should say with uh, the same conditions all right let's just call that condition star all right so with these conditions so I'm not putting down all k grid in big k it's like in all k greater than k bar here but uh, it applies to these two inequalities as well because these two came from basically this original inequality right uh, where the differential is taken with respect to the Euclidean structure, it's like on the tangent space. On the tangent space at xk to the manifold m Okay, so, so let's uh, try to put together what we have so far. It's like, and then uh, try to arrive at the contradiction. Okay, so, okay, so since uh, we have the sequence alpha k going to zero, right? And the search directions are gradient related. bounded right it follows that uh, the alpha tildes uh, still converge to uh, zero as well right because the point is that uh, the alpha case and the alpha k tildes it's like are related it's like by essentially the norm it's like of the uh, gradient related sequences and then divided by beta right beta is bounded away from zero and then this uh, we using the fact that the sequence of search directions is gradient related uh, the norms are bounded so again you know it has to be that uh, the sequence of alpha k tildes are themselves uh, going to converge to zero okay so um, and then uh, the sort of the eta tilde, right? Has unit norm. So it belongs to a compact set. Uh, to a compact set. So there exists uh, an index set uh, where you have a limit, right? So essentially there's uh, <coughs> essentially a subsequence of this, if you will. It's like uh, um, such that there is uh, there's a limit 
uh, which I call eta tilde star, right? Um, and the norm of that eta tilde star is uh, one, because um, the norm of every term it's like in that sequence is one. Okay. Um, So now you can uh, take the limit that's like of that inequality, right? So now we take the limit of um, this equation, right? And since the Riemannian metric is continuous, it's like an F is uh, C1. And um, when this is at zero, right, because you're limiting, it's like uh, as K goes to zero, right? Um, okay, so when you take the limit of this, you get negative, I should say, um, Taking, now we take the limit of the inequality above. It's like when using the fact that the metric uh, is continuous. F is C1. And uh, D of F hat. Uh, xk evaluated at zero in this search direction, right, is equal to the gradient of f at xk eta k tilde at xk. All right. Um, so together, these two, uh, these several observations, uh, applying the limit to that gives you that uh, the left hand side looks like negative the gradient, uh, the inner product, the gradient of f at the limiting point. Okay, uh, in the limiting search direction, which is less than equal to minus sigma, uh, the gradient of f at x star eta tilde star at xk. I'm sorry, at x star. Okay, both of these are at x star. Oops. X star, x star. Okay, all right. Um, but since sigma is less than one, Since sigma is less than one, right? You can um, you can basically it's like collect the terms it's like together, right? To conclude that uh, just the gradient uh, f at x star it's like uh, interproducted with uh, eta k sort of uh, x star tilde, right? Is greater than or equal to zero. So the gradient of uh, f x star in the direction eta star evaluated at x star t x star right is greater than or equal to zero but eta k is gradient related so um, that inner product less than zero, so you get a contradiction. Okay, um, 
So again, it's like what that tells you basically is that if you look at the sequence iterates, it's like what you generate, it's like from this line search algorithm which had developed on manifolds, um, then all the accumulation points are going to be such that the gradient, it's like F, at those accumulation points uh, vanish. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, so I'm, I'm going to state it's like a, a, a corollary of this. Okay. Which uh, is a stronger condition. Well, it's a stronger result. It's like if we make a few additional sort of fairly standard assumptions. So, so again, you have the sequence, the infinite sequence iterates. Generated by algorithm one. Okay, and then assume that uh, the level set um, L, set of points X in M such that F of X, technically the sub-level set, I guess. Okay, less than f of x0, right, as compact, which of course holds uh, if uh, m itself is compact. In particular, if Okay, then uh, the limit as k goes to infinity of the great norm of the gradient of f of xk is zero. Okay, so uh, so that's sort of uh, a slightly, um, you know, it's like that's a stronger condition. It's like and. Um, Yes, and we can prove this like by using the previous result uh, we had shown before. Again, you assume uh, sort of towards contradiction. Sort of assume the contrary. Okay, then uh, there is a subsequence. iterates xk, say k in some index set big K, okay, and epsilon greater than zero, such that the gradient uh, of f of xk, right, is bounded uh, from below, it's like by epsilon for all k in this index set. Okay, but uh, f is non-decreasing as, as before non-increasing, sorry. On this set, so uh, xk is in L for all k. Okay, right, because yeah, the sub-level set is con if contains all the future iterates, um, if you start off with the initial iterate x0, because uh, f is non-increasing, non sorry. Okay, um, but then we assume that this sub-level set is compact, right? Um, so you have this subsequence, okay? So since L is compact, right, that means that xk for k in the index set big K has an accumulation point. Uh, 
uh, x star in L. Okay, and then by continuity of the gradient, right? Uh, one has that um, the gradient of f at the accumulation point x star, right, has to be greater than equal to, right. So all the um, all the iterates in this uh, index set k greater than or k in big K, right, has the property that gradient norm of the gradient is greater than epsilon. So if uh, x star is the limit, it's like of this uh, subsequence, it has to be that the gradient of f evaluated x star is greater than equal to epsilon, okay, which is a contradiction. So this means that x star is not a critical point. which is a contradiction to the theorem. Okay, so that uh, proves what we need, which is that if you have this infinite sequence of iterates uh, generated by this uh, line search algorithm, uh, which we talked about in manifolds, then if the sublevel sets of the cost function are compact, or the subloper sets of the function is compact, right? Then uh, the limit as k tends to infinity of the gradient f um, evaluated on each of these iterates is like has norm uh, going to zero. Okay, what? Well, sorry, the limit of the norm of the gradient is zero. Okay, so let me just uh, stop here for now. Thank you. Okay.